Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 2 of the Pac-Man game dev series where we recreate the famous arcade game on scratch. If you haven't watched part 1, then click on the card up here. And just a reminder, if you are stuck during any part or video, then you can head over to the downloadable files link in the description below, download just the file that you need and then continue with the tutorials. Today, we will be programming the entire movement of the Pac-Man and by the end of this video, your Pac-Man sprite will be able to move throughout the level without any problems. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get right into the code. To start with, let's quickly program the prison barrier. It's just four lines of code and the sooner we are done with this, the better. On receiving init level, go to x0, y20 and go to the back layer and finally show. That's pretty much it. Now head over into the grid sprite. In part one, we created some useful custom blocks here and we must duplicate that code in the Pac-Man sprite. Drag the two blocks do the Pac-Man sprite and clean up. To ensure seamless movements for this sprite, there are a few custom blocks to create. Create one called go to tile x followed by an input of tile x, tile y followed by an input of tile y. Make sure to run without screen refresh. This block will receive the tile coordinates as inputs and move the Pac-Man to the desired X and Y location. For this, set X to offset X plus tile X multiplied by tile width plus tile width divided by two. This should be easy to understand, especially since I explained this in detail in part one. Similar stuff for the Y position. Do the same thing, but change offset X to offset Y and tile x to tile y. Now create another custom block called test next tile with an input of dx and dy, making sure to run without screen refresh. Of course, this does not refer to differential calculus. dx and dy just refer to the change in the tile x and tile y position respectively. First, get tile at current x and y positions. After this, tile x, tile y, and index will be set to their correct values depending on which tile the Pac-Man currently is at. To check for collisions, we need a trigger variable, so create a boolean one called can move for this sprite only. Initially, set it to no. Now for the fun part. Go to tile x, tile x plus dx, and tile y, tile y plus dy. Here the sprite will actually shift to a different position, so now we can check if the Pac-Man is touching the level. In addition, we can also check for collision with the barrier, because this functions as a wall for the Pac-Man sprite, though not for the ghosts. If neither of these conditions are met, then it means that the ghost is clear, so we can set can move to yes. The Pac-Man is now at the wrong location, so we must go back to its location of tile X and tile Y. This block is crazy useful and we will reuse this multiple times. Anyway, two more custom blocks left and then we can code the main script. This one will be called test movement and make sure to run without screen refresh. Next, create a variable called dir for this sprite only. DOR will constantly store the correct direction of the sprite. Our convention will be slightly different from scratch. Up will be 0, right 90, down 180, and left 270. Scratch usually takes left as negative 90, but doing operations with negative 90 will lead to certain problems. When we set the direction to DOR, and dir is 270, the sprite will still point to the left. Metaphorically, this allows us to have our cake and eat it too. 
we can do the operations with a positive number and still point in the correct direction. Like I mentioned in the last video, there are a lot of small gold nuggets such as this. They appear to be minuscule and insignificant, but they are actually super important and a lot of thought must go into them. In the test movement function, we will check if the movement of one additional tile in the current direction is possible. So for example, if the Pac-Man keeps moving and then hits a wall, we would want it to stop and not keep moving. To do this, we need to check manually each value of DER. If DER is 0, then it means we are moving up. To check the next tile up, tile X remains the same, but tile Y changes by 1. For a direction of 180, we do the exact reverse. Tile X remains the same, but tile Y changes by minus 1. If the direction is 90, then tile X changes by 1, but tile Y remains the same. Lastly, if DER is 270, then tile X changes by minus 1, and tile Y remains the same. This is a bit lengthy, but hopefully you are crystal clear with this concept. One thing to remember here is that we've actually not done anything except to ensure that the can move variable is set accurately. If can move at the end of this block is yes, then we will proceed with the movement in the main script. Now for the last custom block. This will be called change direction and make sure to run without screen refresh. The purpose of this block is to ensure that the Pac-Man changes directions only when it is possible. To do this, we must sense all the four arrow keys. If key up arrow is pressed, then test style with dx0 and dy1. If can move is yes, then it means that a direction change is possible, so set door to 0. Now use this very blueprint for each arrow. For the down arrow, it will be 0, comma, minus 1 and the DO variable 180. For the right arrow, it will be 1, comma, 0 with the DO variable being 90. Finally, for the left arrow, it will be minus 1, comma, 0 with the DO variable being 270. Until now, DO is simply a variable that doesn't do anything. Thus, we link it to the direction by pointing it in direction DER. Wow, that was a lot of code, but it will be worth it. Since we have all these custom blocks ready, the main script will be a walk in the park. Let's start with init grid. Here, hide, set size to tile width, divided by 8, multiplied by 100%. Finally, set rotation style to all around. The size trick should be familiar from part 1. The costume size is 7x7, seven seven, but that doesn't matter as this block will result in it basically being as big as a single tile. In part 1, we broadcasted a new message called init pacman. When this message is received, go to tile x1 and tile y1. If you look at the stage, you'd notice that this is the tile where the pacman is currently at. If you wish, you can change this to a tile of your choice, but the bottom left is what I prefer. Anyway, set door to 90 to ensure that the Pac-Man will begin moving to the right. Following this, go to the front layer and show. Great, all that's left is the main script. When start game is received, repeat until game over becomes yes. We set the game over variable to no at the beginning in part 1, so until something changes that variable to yes, this loop will basically repeat forever. Each time in the loop, we first ensure that the sprite points in the correct direction. Then we get tile at the current x and y position. We could go ahead and test movement, but I'd like to fix the portal scenario right away. Here is the simple problem. 
When the Pac-Man goes to the left tile and it is moving leftwards, then it should teleport to the right tile and continue moving in the same direction. Similarly, if the Pac-Man goes to the right tile and is moving rightwards, then it must teleport to the left tile and continue its path. The first step seems to be to find out the indices of these two portal tiles. Disconnect the code from the message, then head over to grid and show the index variable. In part 1, we ran a script forever that gives us all the information about the tile that the mouse is over. As you can see, the left tile has an index of 172 and the right tile has an index of 190. All we have to do now is manually change the position of the Pac-Man for these two instances. Getting back to the code, after the get tile at block, the same index value is stored. So if index is 172 and the direction is leftwards, meaning dir is 270, then get the position of index 190. Now, tile x and tile y store the value of the 190th index, so we can go to the tile x and tile y coordinates. And that is for teleportation, which is two custom blocks we have finished programming the exception. Take a moment to make sure that you are clear with what we're doing here. Alright, that's the first case. Now we must do the reverse. So, if index is 190 and door is 90, then get position at index 172 and go to tile x and tile y coordinates. And bam, just two more tiles and the second exception is complete. The else condition here refers to all the cases which do not involve the portals. Here, test movement. If can move is yes, then the coast is clear. At this point, we can simply move tile with steps, but that animation will be quite choppy and abrupt. Instead, we can break that down into smaller steps with the repeat until. To control the condition, create a variable called c for this sprite only. This variable will simply function as a counter. Set it to 1 in that condition. Now repeat until c is equal to 11 or if game over becomes yes. If we use a repeat 10 instead, then the problem is that the entire animation must be completed and there is no way to break out of this loop when the game ends, say when a ghost hits the Pac-Man. This could lead to some disastrous bugs. Alright, now for the slightly tricky part. We must move the sprite a total of tile width steps. But since we are repeating 10 times, each time the sprite moves by tile width divided by 10 steps. This ensures a smooth animation. Given that we have done all the work, a costume change is also very simple. We could just throw in a next costume, but that will make the costume changes too fast. Rather, we do it every two ticks. If C mod 2 is equal to 0, then next costume. If you head over to the costumes tab, you will notice two costumes of the Pac-Man. One with an open mouth and one with a closed one. These two will keep interchanging successively to create an animation of the Pac-Man gobbling up food. And that is everything we will do for this video. Test the program and wow, the Pac-Man is fully operational. We can use the arrow keys to move it anywhere we wish to and the portals also work flawlessly. There's still a lot of ground to cover but we have made some great progress. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you in part 3.